Good evening, everyone. Um, let me quickly share my presentation. Um, so the presentation is just trying to, to show, um, can you confirm if you are seeing the presentation? Not yet, uh, Rachel. Okay. It's coming now. There we go. Perfect. You can just put it on to show now. Thank you. Slideshow. Uh, there, there you go. Thanks a lot. Off you go. <laughs> uh, I'm just trying to minimize. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, welcome everyone who is in the who has joined. Uh, I guess you learn one or two from my presentation. Um, the, the presentation is just trying to give a, a guide on how you can achieve competence on the 11 outcomes for registration. Um, I'll be focusing more on the professional engineers. Uh, my colleague will be sharing uh, on the professional technologist and the techno, uh, you'll come after me. So this presentation will be focusing more on the engineers. As you are aware, the process for registration for engineers was standardized, standardized. So it's now uniform across the board, across the disciplines, uh, across um, electrical, civil, mechanical. As long as you are registra registering as a professional engineer, the process is now standardized and, this, and it is the same. Uh, this is just a guide of the presentation. Um, uh, I'm more going to focus from the third slide, which is the X11 outcomes. But um, the first two are just introductory. Due to time limits, um, I'm not going to focus on this. This is just the POE that you need to submit, which is the portfolio of evidence that you need to submit uh, for registration. Uh, as, uh, as per the introduction by Zinet, um, you might have a four-year engineering degree, which is the requirement for professional engineers. So for you, before you submit your application, you need to have that B -Eng or BSc -Eng degree from South Africa, from a South African university. If you are not from uh, a South African university, your qualifications will need to go through the XI Education Evaluation Committee uh, to, to confirm your, your, your education qualifications, or otherwise it, uh, the Washington Accord may apply if where you come from uh, is that they've signed that agreement with EXA. So training and experience, the minimum, which is three years, but we know this is not practical. And most engineers are not able to register within the three years due to the nature of our economy and the nature of work that one is exposed in the area of um, where, where you'll be working. And uh, for well, what makes it a uh, difference between the professional engineers and the technologist is the level descriptor where the engineer is supposed to solve complex engineering problems and performing complex engineering activities. So let me just see how to move this. The, it's eating onto my presentation. But is it, is it for you for one to achieve competence in the 11 outcomes? Uh, one is assessed in two stages, which is the experience appraisal stage and the professional review stage. So during the experience appraisal stage, one would have submitted a training and experience report. Uh, in that uh, TR, you will need to indicate competence in the 11 outcomes. And you need to indicate that you are at least working uh, for at least one year at a level E of responsibility. I'll be explaining more on this level of responsibility in the later slides. And you'll be also, um, the engineering report that you submit, it also needs to indicate competence on the 11 outcomes as well as the level of responsibility. So the engineering report 
um, at least it, whatever uh, you're going to examples, projects where you have worked, you need to indicate that you're working at level E. Uh, the same thing at the professional review stage, when you attend the professional review interview, you need now to demonstrate competence on the 11 outcomes. Remember at the EA stage, it was only your submission which was being assessed, but then the PR stage, you you be the you attend the interview in person or via MS Teams, uh, so you need to demonstrate uh, to the panel that you have achieved the competence on those two. So just to expand further on the training and experience report, because this is the first um, uh, submission which the assessors we have in front of them, so they need to prove they they need. To, to, to indicate that uh, you have achieved competencies on those. So I thought it's best I, I, I explain this before I go to the outcomes uh, individually. So in the TAER, the training and, ex, training and experience report, you need to describe the work that you did. Uh, do not just list tasks um, and projects, but explain the role and to what degree you exposed and actually uh, responsible for. So you need to indicate the work that you did. We know that you work in a team, but uh, in your submission, you need to indicate your personal involvement in the project. Uh, and you should not spend more than one paragraph describing the work that you worked on. And um, complete and submit a TR for each phase of training and work experience from graduation to application for registration. Uh, then the training and experience report, it needs to indicate that you have at least one year of working at the degree of uh, responsibility E, which is performing, and you address it all, all bullet points on the template form. Um, it is very uh, recommended that you use, you address the topics as per the template. Uh, do not divert and use your own um, format and do not exceed 2,000 words. For mature applicants, usually uh, some uh, applicants have 10 or more years experience, but this can be relaxed. You can uh, submit the report for the last three years of experience at a uh, degree of responsibility E, and you explain in detail, and it, the, work, the report should be signed off by your supervisors. For the engineering report, it covers the aspects of work done by the applicant uh, on, on all the outcomes. So you need to indicate um, the, 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 the work that you have done. Uh, it can be one project, it can be several projects, as long as you are addressing each outcome to indicate that you now have competence in the outcome. Uh, so yes, it may be based on a project or series of projects, and it's a report to reflect uh, your engineering activity at the, at the required level of competence for the 11 outcomes. It must be written in, in the first person and in English language. Avoid using the word we, you know, if you can use I did this, you know, I as much as possible. They need to indicate that tr truly you are the one doing the work. Then um, use also the template for the editing and closure of the report. Closure of the report that is provided on the application form. Uh, use as much technical details as possible. Avoid giving summative description of work done. So avoid just saying. Um, we designed a, a three-story building. You know, you need to indicate the details. Uh, so you need to indicate as much calculations as possible. Avoid copying uh, formulas from textbook and punching them into your engineering report. You, you are now in the field and we, you are expected to be working on real projects. So you need to be showing, uh, you know, you, you showed the formula, but you showed the workings, how you achieved the result how you did the design. So avoid um, submitting reports which are too descriptive. 
uh, you'll be a structural engineer, but you don't submit, not even a sketch, you know. So it, it will count against you to indicate whether you are really uh, achieving competence uh, in, the, in one of the outcomes. So uh, the purpose of the engineering report, you need to prove that you are doing engineering work and you are working as a project engineer, not as a project manager. So the, the, you need to achieve the competence um, as an engineer, not as, we know you'll be doing management work, but you should be doing an overall. You do both designs, you do management, you know, and you are aware of the broader aspects of engineering. Then the report body, including headings, subheadings should be 6,000 words. Uh, again, diagrams, calculation, tables, pictures appropriate to the purpose defined above must not exceed four, uh, four pages. And the report is also a test of written communication of outcome five. So your, ab your ability to, to structure the report, the style, the language aspect, uh, and the, the logical development, you know, of how you, you, you developed competence on, on the outcomes. It also tests your um, outcome five, which is the written communication. And the engineering report, most preferable, should form the basis of the presentation uh, that you, as an applicant, make at the professional review because the assessors would have studied that and would be have prepared questions based on that engineering report. So it's, it will make the process much easier if you present based on the information that you have submitted. So this is just a summary of the PR review. What it means is you have passed the ES stage. It's a 15 minute presentation and a 45 minutes question answer session. You can prepare print the copies of the presentation, um, or you can email if it's virtual. Then you can also present you know, additional calculations, drawings. You need to present your ID and you speak in first, um, in first person. So uh, before we go to the outcomes, I will just go to define the what is a complex engineering activity. Um, step one for you to, is it a, you need to identify whether it's an engineering problem. And if it is an in, um, engineering problem, does solving the problem require in-depth fundamental specialized engineering knowledge? You know, it should, the, the, the problem that you present should be different to the work that you did in your final year as a dissertation. It should show that it's, you have now developed uh, your, your fundamental knowledge. So you need to indicate whether does it solve the, the required in-depth fundamental specialized engineering knowledge. If you take then uh, that's the first step, then you need to establish the level of complexity of the initial, initial problem state. What is the nature of the problem? Does it have one or more? So these points B, C, D, one of, as long as one of them applies, then it is a complex uh, engineering problem. So the problem um, should be ill-posed, under or over-specified. It requires identification and refinement. The problem is a high-level problem, includes components or parts or sub-problems. The problem is unfamiliar or involves infrequently encountered issues. So well, what you need to establish is, is it a, 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 a problem where you just start straight into designing or you have to investigate? This is where the issue of investigation comes to say that do we need to conduct further investigations uh, onto, the, on, on, onto the problem? So if you have got a, a structural, if it's a structural project, uh, you cannot just start with designing as a structural engineer. There are some investigations that you need to uh, co conduct so that you can uh, identify the, the problem. So that's why they say, does it require identification and refinement? So does it require uh, for you to 
do geotech investigations? Does it require you to do topographical surveys uh, so that you can use that information? This is the information that you input into your design. So as long as it is not, um, as it is requiring further investigations and it will be based on the results of that investigation, like your design of the footing or foundation will be dependent on the geotech results, then it is a complex uh, problem. And also some projects, you also need a specialist input. Um, uh, so like uh, if, if it's in, in water, you might need to do some studies into the uh the, the 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 water you might need specialist uh, information to input into your design uh, so uh, let's say it's a it's a water project and it's in a municipal area you might need to investigate you know to to go through all the let's say metering data to establish the demand yes there's a red book but you need to confirm whether the red book the demands in the red book and what is actually on the ground, are they matching? Or maybe you need to design something that is specific for your problem. So this is a uh, way where, where you are trying to establish or what inputs. So once you start doing that additional work and you are uh, doing over the standards that are available to you, come up with a solution that is specific to your um, engineering problem, then it is a complex problem. Then the problem is unfamiliar, involves in frequently encountered issues. Yeah, so some projects, um, you, the, the geotech of the area might have been undermined, you know, uh, and we, we, once the excavation start, you discover that this is, never encountered and you now need to develop a new solution for that. So that also will make it a complex engineering problem. So that's why it says, does it have one or more? So as long as it has one, then it is a complex engineering problem. Then step three, determine the complexity of solution path from the initial state. Uh, what is encountered in the solution process do the solutions have one or more? So if the solutions are not obvious and require originality or analysis based on fundamentals, this is what I was explaining on the um, water demands to say, maybe you need to go through the metadata for that um, municipality and you need to, it means the solution now is not obvious and you are going to develop a specific solution for that. Um, challenge. Um, and the solutions are outside the scope of standards and codes. So sometimes the codes that you have, you might need to go beyond the codes. If you can prove it, then it's also complex. And the solutions require information from a very variety of sources that are complex, abstract, or incomplete. So usually when you do your designs, you might need sources from different uh, areas. You need a geotech here, you need a tropical survey here, you need water demands here, you need you know, different uh, sources of information to come up with a solution. And the solutions involve wide ranging or conflicting issues such as technical and en engineering issues and interested or affected parties. So in your projects, you might end up having more than one discipline. You have a geotech engineer, you have um, electrical, you've got a structural, you've got a water, you know, you've got the architect. So you have several affected parties. It will make it a complex engineering problem. And uh, determine the level of decision making required and potential consequences. What is involved in the decision making while solving the problem? So. Uh, does the decision require judgment in decision making and the decisions have significant con consequences in a range of contexts? Um, so uh, this slide is just touching on the degree of responsibility. So as, as, after you graduate, you, your, your development stage, um, you start being exposed, which is a DORA and B, assisting uh, C, participating, 
the contributing, but I'll just focus on E where you'll be performing. So when you are applying for registration, you should be at the level of performing where you are working in a team without supervision and recommends work outputs. You'll be responsible, but not accountable. Remember the registered engineer will be accountable. And the level of responsibility to supervisor is appropriate for a registered person. As a candidate, it means you take on problem solving without support at most limited guidance. So you need to ask yourself before you submit the application, are you now at a level of e-performing? And also if you are recently graduated, just be aware that these are the stages um, that you need to, uh, that, that, that uh, indicate how you'll be growing until you, um, you have the level of responsibility. E. And when you submit your application, you cannot start um, indicating that you are at level E. It will just raise up eyebrows. So you need to indicate that you are going through all the stages. You cannot jump and just start being at level E soon after graduating. Uh, these are the 11 outcomes, but I'll focus on them. Yeah, I'll focus on them individually. So outcome one, yeah, it's uh, define, investigate, and analyze complex engineering problems. Yeah, you need to define the engineering problem, the method statement for solving the problem. So the problem may be a design require, requirement, that is for, for designers, an applied research for those who are in the academic field, or a development requirement for those who are uh, in, in maintenance or uh, not in the consultants' fields, or a problem, problematic situation in a, an existing component system or process that needs to be solved. Um, so you need to evaluate pertinent information and identify systems and subsystems of the complex problems. You need to analyze the relevant assumptions, inputs, required outputs for, of a complex problem. So usually for designers, you need to investigate. This is where you get your inputs for your design. Where do you get the inputs from investigations? You go to site, you do a site um, inspection, you do uh, uh, geotech, um, you, you know, you do geotech uh, investigations. If it's roads, you do the pavements, you need to, to test the strength of the, you do uh, several tests along the pavement, you know, so depending on the type of project that you are doing, you need to ensure that you have done full thorough investigation so that the inputs to your design um, can, can lead to the required outputs of the complex problem. Outcome two, design or develop solutions to complex engineering problems. Here you'll be carrying out the solution to the problem and testing the validity and reasonability of the assumptions. You need to make use of the first or fundamental principles in approach that is systematic, but may be within and familiar or previously encountered techniques, which I was explaining uh, under complexity. So you need to articulate the solution and develop an integrated implementation plan. So this is where I was saying you don't need, you should not just give a highly summative description to say I did this. You need to articulate the solution, the steps uh, to say this is how, how I got my demands and this is how I size the system, you know, and all the assumptions you need to, to, to state them. So the solution may be the design of a component system or process or recommendation of the remedy to a problematic situation within context of the defined problem. Uh, outcome three, outcome three. So on outcome three, this is where you comprehend and apply um, fundamental principles. So uh, usually competence on outcome three is usually demonstrated when you are uh, also demonstrating competence on outcome two, because uh, outcome three, you, you are displaying your specialist knowledge, you know, um, 
which, which are specific to your local conditions and your jurisdiction. So as you are demonstrating competence on usual loan outcome two, you also be demonstrating competence on outcome three. So competence is indicated in the evaluation and solution of the complex engineering problem by the application of sound and testable assumptions underpinned by the utilization of requisite advanced knowledge. Specialist knowledge uh, that is depth in the practice area is underpinned by the fundamental knowledge of the engineering discipline. Uh, it also demonstrates sound working knowledge uh, of the interacting disciplines, how we input the um, sources of information from different disciplines into your design to come up with one design and the jurisdictional knowledge uh, that includes the legal and regulatory requirements in addition to locally relevant codes of practice. So depending on where you are, uh, we, we all know that uh, certain, let's say municipalities, have their own design guide, guidelines, city of Cape Town, Swane. So when you're in Swane uh, and doing a project for city of Swane, you might need to use their guidelines. So this is where you demonstrate your jurisdictional knowledge. Um, so on outcome three, you also need to indicate uh, like which standards were you using, which design guidelines you're using, how did you apply them to come up with the solution to the problem that you developed in outcome two. So uh, outcome three indicates an understanding and application of engineering standards specific to your discipline. So just listing the codes or the design guidelines won't assist, but you need to say, uh, to, to refer to them, you know, they, they should be an interaction, not just a whole list of design standards. It's not indicating how you're applying. So you need to ind indicate how you apply the, you refer to the guideline to come up with uh, the design or solution, the design that you, you did or the solution that you developed. So for a professional engineer, these are the key um, outcomes, outcome one, uh, one, two, three, outcome to outcome nine and 10. And also you need to be at a level E because this is mainly where you do most of the uh, key engineering work. Outcome Rachel, four. Rachel, sorry to disturb you. You have just said one, two, three, and nine and 10 are really important for engineers. I think the others are not that different across the board. Can I please ask you to race along on outcomes four to eight and get to nine and 10 because um, we're running out of time. And so it concentrates on us if you don't mind. Yes, so yeah, outcome four and I, I agree with you. Um, outcome four and um, four, five, six, seven, and eight, they are, they are the same across the board. So I'll go to nine and 10. So nine and 10, you need to access outcome nine, you need to indicate uh, to exercise sound judgment uh, on complex engineering activities. Uh, so in, indicate this by uh, presenting, you need to, to indicate uh, through in your presentation, in, in your engineering report, you need to highlight where you exercise sound judgment, where you did a comprehensive and systema systematic application of fundamental principles to complex engineering problems, which have significant implications on a multitude of stakeholders. And you take cognizance that you, you, you are accountable and you took responsibility for that uh, judgment that you did. So it can be a technical, um, uh, it has to be technical to indicate that you have that competence. And judgment in decision-making will involve the consideration of diverse. It means you have considered diverse and wide ranging risk factors, the significant consequences in a range of con contexts and wide ranges of uh, interested and affected parties with varying needs, you took that into consideration. And uh, you, there was correct use of standards and regulations 
and regard for the accountability and responsibility and decision-making processes. And outcome 10, um, so outcome nine is more related to outcome one, two, and three. And outcome 10 is more related to outcome four, six, and seven to say uh, what decisions were you making in part or all of the uh, complex engineering activities. So you need to indicate that you took responsibility for certain outcomes or certain parts of, the, of that activity. And uh, you need to indicate competence in identifying the impacts of implementations of decision or solving the problem. And you consider the negative impacts and assessing risk in a systematic manner and you're taking responsibility and you, uh, you can be held accountable for the far reaching and significant consequences. Uh, outcome level is also um, across the board, it's uniform. Uh, thank you, uh, Alison. So I, I will leave outcome four, five, six, seven and eight and 11 to the next present. Okay, thank you. Is, is that the end? Do you got any other pearls of wisdom to share? Uh, yeah, this is very key. The documents, uh, the, this presentation which I've done, it's mainly based on that um, document, RO2 STAPE uh, competence standards for professional categories. So I encourage everyone to go onto the EXA website and download these documents. There's a whole list and they guide you. You can go it in detail. We know the time that we have now is limited, but if you go and look for these documents, they will assist and guide you in preparing your submission for application for professional registration.